maybe there is also a lot of puritanism, puritanism in, in there. The idea that the American, those people who went on the Mayflower, who though they were a very small minority, you know, the actual per people who, um, the, the actual person who gave his name to and had the idea to set up an English colony um, uh, was actually John... Uh, um, his, his name, his family name was Amaric, um, which means First Empire in Old Anglo-Saxon. And he, his coat of arms, you can actually see it in a museum in the, in the, in the southwest of uh, England has actually got the stars and stripes as his as his as his coat of arms, you know. Um so it does go back quite that far. There is a little bit of a debate about where the word America comes from, but I would say say that's a strong candidate considering considering uh Americ, um was one of the people who helped put up the money with Queen Elizabeth and everything else to to go to America. So there is a little bit of a Puritan Christian identity there to Toryism, which develops some in some of the strands are still in the um, Republican Party. I've even seen in um, around around I think it was 1994. I remember seeing a news um, uh, a new a news broadcast from America. Um, I think it was one of the Royals was making a visit there and there were still people in America who, who flew the British flag alongside the American flag and called themselves and said that they were British Americans which, and I've heard many people call themselves Anglo or English Americans I think that is still a very strong link with the old country as most Americans are German or of German or American uh, German or English descent i.e. Most Americans are Nordic Celtic people, um, ethnically. You can say that that applies also to the to the Italians, at least the northern Italians who went there. Um, but the, the 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 critical point might be that by the time you you have the uh, Americans, the American founding fathers, they were, and um, Tom Paine. Particularly, although he was an Englishman, helped start the French Revolution, which helped then bring on all the events that brought on Napoleon, which brought in Britain against Napoleon because Britain was a was the premier sea power and it wouldn't allow a continental power to challenge uh, its colonies in Germany, Britain's colonies in Germany, and also any of its colonies in Asia or Africa uh, or those in Canada and, and, and what would later become those in uh, Central America. Uh, so the Americans of course had a um, idea to raid and disrupt a, America, a British shipping and uh, this brings to mind a an interesting conversation I had with uh, uh, Pie Man, uh, one of the people who are my subscribers, uh, about the 1812 war because that was a really critical point of in American history because the uh, British em the British Empire was distracted and its main focus was keeping France occupied in in um, Europe. So they would never be able to challenge them in the in North America, or in uh, India, which the French had done quite successfully before when it, it, Louis the Fourteenth, I think it was, uh, the Sun King, was quite active in trying to make uh, India a French colony. He was kicked out by us. Um, for the for the British, they had to. Um, deal with this so a war on two fronts a maritime war and of course when the British landed they went on a successive campaigns and although General Jackson down in the Mississippi Delta um, got together the American citizen militia which I'll cover about 
in um, the militarism video on uh, citizens, 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 citizens in militarism um, at another time. But the, the, the uh, he he got the their natural skills in field craft and shooting and marching long terms terms and gave them military discipline and a military ethos and was able to beat the British a couple of times in battles. But overall, the um, the problem for the Americans was how to stop fighting. Because it, although they wanted to disrupt um, British trade and everything and get neutral ships and everything else and engage um, in uh, in the slave trade as well at the time um, there was a, a new, there was there was a, a, a large uh, interest in that which I don't really want to go into too much now um, in the uh, sort of smaller political factions within America and ethnic factions in keeping the uh, trade going um, so Britain engaged in in a war in, in some large scale battles there they were victorious in most of them and burned the uh, the first White House and Washington DC you know um, but the problem for the Americans was obviously uh, this idea that they, they were militarily defeated but they just couldn't stop themselves from fighting on because the constitution the constitutional um, ethos you know that they didn't want to be stamped out and so the British basically put forward some ideas about um, so that they knew the Americans would find unacceptable and the Americans could in negotiations reject so that they, the Americans could save face and they us stop fighting and so the British would have the distraction of going on to uh, keep, in, keep fighting um, and of course because the Americans weren't defeated and it was basically uh, for the British a considered a victory for the Americans considered a, uh, a, um, a draw if you like or, or they played it off to their public as a victory it brought about the idea in reality not just conceptually of American exceptionalism the idea that America was not um, that you know as Carol Quigley later put in his book Tragedy and Hope uh, which was a broad was basically a, a, an attempt at doing a real analytical history of the world that all empires when they reach their zenith start to experience difficulty in raising manpower difficulty in innovating and they also start to see that there is a growth in inequality between the top and the bottom uh, of um, the economic strata and an erosion of citizenship rights which ultimately leads to and, and obligations between citizens which, um, leads to problems of creating new solutions to the problems which are becoming structurally endemic in the entire system and which are leading to corruption and like the Romans the no em and, and the British to a certain extent no empire and certainly the Russians no empire ever is defeated from outside until it's destroyed itself from within um, 